Hello and welcome to this short little lecture on fiction. Going to give you some overview about not only what fiction is, but also about writing, some different concepts. So let's get right to it. Okay, is writing a form of time travel? Well, ask yourself that question. Now, what do you think? Is it? Is it not? Well, let's find out, okay? Imagine the following. In an open field is a flower patch. Inside the flower patch stands a pole. Hanging from the pole is a sign with a single word written in blood. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes. I'm serious, close your eyes. I'm going to read this to you again, and I want you to imagine the scene, okay? So, have your eyes closed. Here we go again. In an open field is a flower patch. Inside the flower patch stands a pole. Hanging from the pole is a sign with a single word written in blood. Okay. So, now uh, go ahead and open your eyes. I'm going to ask you some questions. Question number one. What color were the flowers? Okay, did you see colors? Did you see yellow, blue, pink? Variation? Okay. Was it sunny or cloudy? Was it day or night? Okay. Again, the answer is going to be unique to you. What material was the pole made from? Was it wood? Was it metal? Uh, was it something else? Okay. How tall was the pole? Was it taller than you? Was it shorter than you? And what word was written on the sign? Now, not everyone sees a word written on the sign. Some people do. Some people don't. Okay. So those are the questions. Now, look at again at the, the words. Okay. Does it tell you what color the flowers were? No. Does it tell you if it was day or night or sunny or cloudy? No. Does it tell you what the pole was made from? What kind of material? No. Or how tall it was? No. Okay. Does it tell you what the word was? No. Okay. I wrote this a few years ago. Yet, right here, right now, you experienced it enough where you can you could give me details about the color of the flowers and the whether you know the, the weather and the material of the pole and how tall it was. And some people can even tell me the what word was written on the sign, but none of that is written here. Okay? So in a chance you kind of time traveled. You experienced what I had written a few years ago. Ooh, something about fiction, huh? Now, also notice something right here. See how it says blood? That is a very, very interesting choice for a word. Instead, let's say if we would have put crayon. Would that have changed your image? Maybe. Okay, crayon is a little more innocent, maybe a little more childlike as opposed to blood. So, again, word choice is a big thing. Now, we'll talk about that more in just a second. So, let's get to writing. Okay, the dreaded blank page. Oh dear, sometimes you want to write, sometimes you want to write poetry or fiction or a short story or something, or you have to write a paper for class or something, and you have the dreaded blank paper. Oh, well, how do I begin? Well, it kind of depends on a few things. There's a few different ways you can do it. One way to start is to recognize what kind of writer you are. Now, when it comes to fiction, it's different than writing research papers for school or proposals for work or whatever. But there's basically two types of writers when it comes to fiction. There are the pantsers and there are the plotters. And no, I did not make up those terms, but those are terms that are basically understood by the writing community. Well, what do those mean? Well, basically a plotter is someone who organizes all their ideas ahead of time, lays them all out, kind of outlines everything before they start writing. This is a technique that's often used when it comes to writing research papers or proposals, okay? Some people even use this technique when writing fiction or poetry. Okay, That is one way to do it. The other way to do it is basically fly by the seat of your pants. Okay, Kind of make it up as you go. Now, there are values for doing it both ways. Personally, I am kind of a combination. I have a general idea what I want to write about, but most of it I make it up as I go. Give you an example of how this would work. Okay, So let's create a story together. Okay, now, this, since this is a video and I'm doing all the talking, we'll kind of just uh, go off of experiences that I've had before when I've done this uh, live in front of people. Okay, um, so let's imagine we've got this scene here. And let's say over here on this shore is a person. Uh, let's say a 19-year-old girl um, f that uh, is just from America. 19-year-old American girl over here. And her goal is to get to that lighthouse. Okay, so if you're going to write a story about that, there's a few different ways you could do it. So I'll ask people, okay, well, how can she get from here to here? Um, some will say, well, she'll she'll swim. So she 
So if we're, we're writing a story, she jumps into the water, she starts to swim, she realizes it's too cold, and it's too far for her to make it, and she's there's just no way she's going to make it, so she makes it back to shore. Oh, that didn't work. Well, can she go around? Well, no, because there's all sorts of jagged rocks, and there's no really way for her to get around this way, and this is all ocean over here. Well, that's not going to work either. Okay, what else can she do? Well, she looks over here, and let's say, let's say she finds a boat. Okay, so she finds a boat. So she climbs in the boat, and she starts to row her way across. Halfway across, she gets attacked by a shark. Sure, why not? A shark. So a shark starts eating the boat. The boat starts to sink. She somehow has to defend herself, so she takes the paddle from the boat, and she smacks the shark upside the head. And the shark goes off dazed, and now she's, uh-oh, but now she's in the middle. She can't swim. She doesn't have a boat. What's going to happen next? Well, it just so happens that, let's say, oh, a helicopter stops by from the, uh, let's say, the Coast Guard and sees her. And they they lower a rope uh, ladder, and they pick her up, and they take her over to safety. Woo! She's done it. Congratulations. Okay, so, look, we just kind of made a story here. But notice that that story was a lot more interesting than if I just said, oh, yeah, she swam to the other side. Okay, because stories are about conflict. That's one thing. Fiction is often always about conflict. There's always some sort of trouble or some sort of obstacle to overcome. But notice here as we were writing fiction, I kept inventing trouble for her to get where she was going because that is more interesting. So as you're reading fiction, as you're writing fiction, you'll notice there is all sorts of trouble, all sorts of conflict. And it comes in all sorts of different ways. Okay, but notice we made this up kind of on the spot. You could have come up with all sorts of different ideas. Okay, but a lot of those ideas came to us as we were just talking, as we were just doing this. So, the point here is that when you're in the act of writing, during the act of writing, ideas will come to you. Okay, that is one of the most important things that I have learned as a writer. Okay, when you go back to that dreaded blank page, you don't know where to start. Write something. Write anything. Once you start writing, ideas will start coming to you. It's like your mind starts to work at that point in time, and ideas will start jumping into your head. But if you just sit there and stare at the blank page, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Start writing something, anything, and you can get going. Okay, and that also works for non-creative writing. Same thing if you have to write a paper for school or a proposal for work. You're not sure how to get started? Write something. Write something. With the understanding, you'll probably go back and change it, but at least start writing something and your mind will start working. Okay, now, a word about word choice. Look at this for a second. There's Batman. He's Batman. And he keeps pounding the, the front of the camera. Bam, he's Batman. Yeah, so, okay. Now, at first you're like, ooh, there's Batman, and he's hitting something. He's got a little bit of blood trickling from his mouth, and he's, he looks like he's in a tunnel or something, and that's interesting, and he keeps doing it over and over and over, and eventually it stops becoming interesting, it starts to become repetitive, and it starts to become even boring. Same thing happens with word choice. If you use the same words over and over and over, um then that can become boring. So, choose your words wisely. Don't overuse strong words. Very important. Let me go back to that one for a second. Don't overuse strong words. Uh, an example would be, um, let's do a quick story. So the quick story is, um, let's say it's a short story, and the last line is, um, at last he said to her, I love you. Oh, now that's touching. Isn't that a nice way to end the story? Okay. Um, love is one of those very strong words. Very strong words. Very powerful words. So what if the story began out with, this is Jim. Jim loves his work. Jim loves to play sports. Jim loves to watch sports on TV. Jim loves his dog. Jim loves to watch sports with his dog on his side. Jim loves to take his dog running. And the whole thing is like that. And then you get to the end of the story, and it's like, and at last, Jim said, I love you. Well, you've overused the word love so much, you're like, well, duh, he loves everything. It, you've lost that impact. Uh, you get it? All right, let's move on. Now, another form of time travel when it comes to writing is... No. Oh, oh, no, people hate this part of writing, but it's so important. Okay, you ready for this? It is revision. Yes, revision is part of the writing process. A lot of people 
Write it down, say, I wrote it, it's good. No, you need to go back and revise it because there's things that you can improve upon. Don't believe me? Well, let's try a little uh, thing. We're going to play a little game here called Find the Editing Mistakes. All right? Because sometimes you write stuff and you don't realize you made mistakes. Uh oh, wait, look. Oh, let's cross that out. Okay, um, there we go. Mistakes, see? Ah, see, I fixed that. Okay, so let's look at this first picture and see if we can find something wrong with it. What is wrong with that picture? Pause the video if you need to. All right, here's the answer. That should say fire. Okay, that is spelled wrong, okay? When do you figure out it's spelled wrong? Before you spray the paint? Or maybe you lay out the letters and double check it and then spray the paint? Yeah, uh, that's when you want to check it, okay? Before you spray the paint. That's an example of revision gone bad, okay? Please slow drively. Okay, pause the video, see if you can figure out what's wrong with that. All right, unpause the video. Please slow drively. Yeah, uh, no. Uh, slowly. So, li, L-Y, that usually makes it an adverb, would be slowly. Please slowly drive or please drive slowly. Okay, uh, yeah. When do you figure out you've done this wrong? Um, after you've made the sign and hung it up in a neighborhood? Or do you fix it while you're putting the words on there? Yeah, okay. Again, revision gone bad. Let's go look at another one. What's wrong with this? This shirt. Pause the video. Okay, now last time I checked, that's not Asia. That's Africa. Okay? When do you figure out this is wrong? Okay, before or after you've created the shirts and put them on the shelf for people to buy. Okay? You want to fix that beforehand. Ooh. You win a medal and you take thirst place. Thirst? Really? How about third place? Unless this is like a drinking game or something. Anyway. So again, when do you figure out you've done that wrong? Before or after you've casted a medal? Well, before. Again, revision, revision. Okay. I actually took this picture. This is in Apex, North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what? This is super confusing. Okay. You come to this intersection and you're like, I got to evacuate. Now, if you have to evacuate, chances are you're not thinking very clearly. And you come to assign this one way? Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. That's confusing. Maybe a better way to do that. Absolutely. Okay, what else? Oh, look, the Avengers. The superhero Avengers. Let's see. What's wrong with this? Pause the video if you need to. All right, let's unpause it. Okay, well, let's see. Well, there's uh, Buzz Lightyear. Okay, I don't think he's part of the Avengers. Uh, the Thing? Uh, he's not an Avenger. Lex Luthor? That's not... No. Okay, so when do you figure out you've done this wrong? Before or after you've made the packaging? Okay. All right. Ooh, how about this one? You're at a light. <laughs> and you... Yeah, let's say you're at a light, and this happens, and there's a police car behind you. What are you going to do? Um, uh, uh, yeah, problem. Okay, get the point. Measure twice, cut once. That's irony. Pause that, figure, figure that one out if you want to. Let's move on. Okay, so how long do you wait to finish a story? Well, stories are never done. They're only due. Sometimes you just have to say it's good enough. Now, here's four tips to becoming a better writer. Write and read. Okay, see how other people have done it. Write and read some more. Write and read even more. Did I mention writing and reading? Yes, I did. Oh, the number one tool, really, all, all the drum roll, please, is to write and read. That's how you become a better writer. That's true. Okay, now, has a teacher ever asked you this question? What does the author mean? Speaking as an author, the only person who knows what the author means is the author. So, this is an example here. What the author meant and what the teacher, English teacher think the author meant. What your teacher thinks. The curtains represent his immense depression and his lack of will to carry on. What the author actually meant. The curtains were blue. Okay? If the teacher asks you, what did the author mean? You say, I don't know. I'm not the author. But what you can do is figure out what it means to you. Okay? So let's say you're writing something. You're like, oh, but what are people going to think? Okay? Well, keep in mind you are writing for a particular audience. Meaning that if they're not your audience, they probably won't like it no matter what. Okay? For example, I'm not a big fan of country music. I'm just not. You can play me a great country music song, and I probably am not going to like it. It's just the way that it is. On the flip side, what if it means if you don't like a story? Well, if you don't like a story, chances are, chances are you are not the intended audience for that story. If we're, you know, as you're reading different books that people say are good and you don't like them, well, so be it. So keep that in mind as you're reading. 
um, fiction that um, these tools will help you realize that you may not be the intended audience, and that's okay. All right.